Good day. It's good to have you along for another look at the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Today in question 28, we consider the word exaltation. Question 28, wherein consists Christ's exaltation? Or in modern speak, how is Christ exalted? And the answer, Christ's exaltation consists in his rising again from the dead and on the third day in ascending up into heaven, in sitting at the right hand of God the Father and in coming to judge the world at the last day. There are four parts to Christ's exaltation in question 28. His resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, his sitting down at the right hand of God the Father and his coming to judge the world. Whereas question 27 of the Shorter Catechism dealt with Christ's humiliation and spoke of past events. Question 28 today, Christ's exaltation addresses the past, present and future. Jesus rose from the grave, he's ascended to heaven all in the past. Today he's sitting in heaven now and one day soon will come again the second advent of Christ. To gain a perspective and exaltation, imagine taking a piece of paper and on one side of the page jotting down a list of things which may win the praise of the world and on the other side of the page jotting down things which will receive the praise of God. Well, what would it take for the world to say to you, well done, might it be good looks, a good body, beautiful hair, designer clothes, intelligence, good marks at school, the voice of an arch archangel, athletic achievements, a well-paid job, a fancy car, a beautiful home with a wonderful family, not forgetting the award-winning pedigree dog. Well done, you're great, you're magic, fantastic, well done. What about receiving the praise of God and hearing his well done, good and faithful one? How is that to be received? By keeping the law of God, loving the Lord with all you have and loving one's neighbour. But what does that look like as a sinful human being saved by the grace of Jesus? In Matthew 25, we see how the Lord delights in those who give away to others and in who doing so give to the Lord as well. We read in Matthew 25 that a cup of water given to a thirsty man or some food like a sandwich given to a starving woman, these done by faith in Jesus Christ are most acceptable to God. And we read in 20, Matthew 25, tending to the needs of others while simultaneously acting on one's faith in Jesus by providing clothing, helping someone sick or unwell, or through keeping in touch with someone whilst they're in prison. These are a minuscule number of ways that humble folk living by faith in Jesus are able to live their lives, knowing that they will hear their heavenly Father's praises, well done, good and faithful servant. And so today we want to encourage one another to live and to keep living by faith in the one who was humiliated yet exalted, remembering that our deeds, good works, do not save our souls, nor win us favour with God, but rather we're justified by faith alone in Christ alone and that our good deeds flow out of a loving trust in Jesus. Our good deeds, they demonstrate that we love the Saviour because he first loved us and gave himself for us. And so in response, we give to others that they too might trust in Jesus by believing the gospel. In the Shorter Catechism, questions 27 and 28, they work together. The humbling and the humiliation come first and then the lifting up and the exaltation. Jesus humbled himself under God to come and to serve his people that he may then be lifted up and exalted. Jesus taught his disciples in person. He teaches us through his word of how we should approach life on earth that the greatest among you will be your servant. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled and who whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Matthew chapter 23, verses 11 to 12. You know, the world that we live in cannot abide humility. It despises the humble man, woman or child, how weak, insignificant and how passive the world says. In Proverbs 18, verse 12, we read, before his downfall, a man's heart is proud, but humility comes before honour. I'm fearful for anyone, young or old, male or female, caught up in any worldly pride movement. For one's expressions of self-exaltation will lead to one's downfall. As it's written in the Bible, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Most definitely not in self. 
in love for God and for our neighbour, we cry out and we seek to help any within our families, churches, schools, workplaces that would be in danger of falling into the pit of self-destruction. We lovingly tell our friends and family that the Lord our God has set our feet on a rock and given us a firm place to stand. And unless we ourselves take heed of scripture and humble ourselves under King Jesus and in faith put his word into practice, then our pride will devastate us and lead us into that pit as well. If, and it is an if, if we listen to God, the way to honour and everlasting life starts with humbling ourselves under God. Indeed, the way to rise is to fall. And furthermore, the way to ascend is first to descend. This is the direction that we want to encourage one another. It's God's way, not the world's and not ours. As we return to the Shorter Catechism, we see overlap between questions 27 and 28. We learn that God's eternal decree involved sending his son into the world and to redeem his people, the elect, from their sins. But whereas question 27 focuses on the matter of Christ's humiliation and the earth, question 28 focuses on Christ's exaltation. Our eyes and attention, they're lifted up to heaven, for there in heaven King Jesus is interceding for us, his people, here on earth, so that God will hold us and keep us from falling away. It is from heaven the exalted Christ will come again to judge the living and the dead, for he who was led to the bar of justice by Roman Gentile soldiers shall be attended to the bench of justice with a guard of angels. That's Jesus. Christ himself will judge his own judges. Yes, even Pontius Pilate, who condemned him to the cross. Kings must leave their thrones and come before Christ's bar of justice. This is the cosmos's highest court of justice. And from this court, there is no appeal. Therefore, Know this, you and I, we are sinners. We have sinned against heaven and earth. We have fallen short of the glory of God and we are all deserving of death and hell. Yours and my only hope is the gospel. Christian or not, turn today, this moment, to the gospel and believe in Christ today. Today is the day of salvation. Know that in Christ today you have an advocate. You have a lawyer who speaks and pleads your innocence though you're guilty. To God the Father. This is Jesus and he is yours and my only defence. Jesus Christ the righteous one. He is our righteousness as we receive him in faith. He is the atoning sacrifice for yours and my sins. He died to save, forgive and reconcile us to God. So my friends, repent, believe, but keep on repenting and believing the glorious good news of Jesus Christ. For he was humiliated yet exalted and he's coming again and he, he's going to come or call you home. Are you ready? One final thought, Christ's exaltation out of humiliation was absolutely the will of the Father which was enacted by the Son. For you may recall that prior to his crucifixion, Jesus prayed, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. John 17. You hear here at this point the magnificent goal of Christ's passion, suffering and agony at Calvary was all to bring the people of God home to heavenly glory with himself. Truly, this awesome prospect is for you, the believer. For together we will see his glory as the exalted king and it will be completely natural for us all to glorify Jesus and to enjoy God forever. Yes, we must enter into glory as Christ did. For there's no other way to the crown but by the cross. And if we suffer with Jesus, then we shall reign with him. Oh, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Is it yours? Then, together by grace, let us praise our Saviour all the day long and even the night.